never been. I'm Kimi Raikkonen, and I drive for Alfa Romeo Racing. He has a name, Iceman, known for using cool logic to overcome any obstacles, being from a place where it's very cold, and being a man of few words. You don't need a lot of words when you only have one objective. Go. Fast. When Kimi Raikkonen stepped out of a junior cart and into the big league, there was skepticism. That skepticism melted away as his frigid demeanor proved to not only hide a refreshing honesty, but a driver who quickly rose to top of the pack, breaking records, harassing champions, and bringing wins to teams that had forgotten the taste of podium air, culminating in a career that spanned more than two decades. This is the story of yet another Finnish legend, as cool on the track as off the track, Kimi Raikkonen. It all started near Helsinki in 1979. There, in a house built by his grandfather by modest hands, Kimi Matthias Raikkonen shot out of the womb and into the racing seat. He and his brother would tear around countryside, fostering an incredible competitive nature that only intensified as time went on. Rumor is that even as young as three years old, Kimi and his older brother Raimi Raikkonen would race small motorbikes around their home suburb Espo terrorizing roadgoers while fighting for the apex. Soon, the brothers had graduated to faster vehicles, and at 10 years old, young Kimi was already racing carts at sanctioned events and winning. That led to a bit of a problem for the Raikkonen family. Racing is expensive. His father took one look at his school records and knew what had to be done. His son, the future formula champion, was much more well-known at school for using his books as a sled than reading them. So to support the career that his offspring was clearly destined to have, Kimi's father Matty worked multiple jobs to support a family of petrol fanatics. It was a struggle at first, but Kimi dedicated every fiber of his being to racing to make sure it paid off. He was 15 when he first raced internationally at Monaco, where he would also start to begin his long saga of battling his own vehicle more than the other racers. It was a taste of frustrations to come when the steering wheel came off his cart on the straight. The next year, after deciding to end the charade of going to school and focus on cars full-time, Kimi once again found himself at the mercy of the Monaco circuit, when his cart spun off the track and into a barrier. His team feared the worst for his health. Kimi feared coming in last more than he feared the danger, and despite injuries, pushed his cart back onto the track, overtaking numerous carts that had not crashed for a third-place spot. With that level of sheer determination on display, it was only natural that he'd quickly climb through the ranks and find himself a regular member of the podium club. Soon he had a first place finish in the Norwegian championship, earning him a spot in Formula Super A, which he crushed by claiming another championship title. Formula Ford, British Formula, and Formula Renault UK all resulted in the same thing, a young Finnish lad from a humble family proudly posing with a first place trophy. As the year 2000 came to an end, the talent scouts had become keenly aware of the rising star. One gentleman, none other than Peter Sauber, the Peter Sauber that the Sauber Formula One team is named after, decided that he'd be stupid not to take a chance. See, normally if you wanted to race Formula One, you'd spend years in other open wheel races, maybe graduate to F3 or F2 for a few years, get seat time in an F1 car warming up the tires for the real drivers, and maybe get picked by a team after really proving yourself reliable. Peter Sauber decided to skip all that nonsense and just throw a 21-year-old Kimi Raikkonen straight into a multi-million dollar open-wheeled rocket. It paid off. Even though he had limited experience in such a fast car, Kimi seemed to instantly understand the vehicle at its deepest levels and in only two practice sessions, was setting lap times that were better than the team's resident racing driver. Peter Sauber knew he had struck gold, but wanted to keep his new driver a secret. He chose to refer to Kimi as Eskimo in pressers perhaps paving the way for the nickname to come. Kimi, however, had no interest in the political side and decided to spend most his time outside the seat simply hanging out or eating ice cream, adding to the mystique that surrounds him to this day. After a long, drawn-out battle of wits and bureaucracy with the FIA, who did not want some kid to just jump into the Formula One hot seat, Peter Sauber was finally able to reveal his new weapon to the world. And in 2001, Kimi Raikkonen entered his first official Formula One race. We have to set the stage here. An hour before one of the most important races in his career, a defining moment in Formula One that completely changed the way that teams scouted out new drivers, and the first chance that he had to prove to the world that he was good enough to be in that cockpit. 
Kimmy was asleep, snoring in his trailer as mechanics panicked before the start of the Australian Grand Prix. He had to be woken up, and presumably was grumpy until he finally, reluctantly, pulled on his race suit and climbed into the seat. He came in sixth, forcing the world to sit up and take notice. Here was this young Finn who came out of nowhere, refused to talk to the press, and was asleep moments before his inaugural event, who stepped out of trailer into the sixth place position in the world's most demanding race. During this first season, Raikkonen would never quite climb to the top, but he still did really well for a complete newbie. As the year came to a close, Sauber was able to claim fourth in the Constructors' Championship, and he had proved that he could absolutely handle the pressure of racing in Formula One. That same season, fellow Finnish driver Mika Hakkinen chose to retire. Hakkinen had been driving for McLaren and had pulled Ron Dennis, Team McLaren's owner and longtime Formula One veteran, aside to say that if he wanted a worthy replacement, someone to keep McLaren competitive, he should go talk to Raikkonen, or more succinctly, if you want to win, get the Finn. Ron likes to win. So starting in 2002, Kimi Raikkonen became the face of McLaren racing. Not that that was important to Kimi, who was busy chasing and wooing supermodel and Miss Scandinavia 2001 Jenny Dahlman, presumably by standing nearby quietly eating ice cream and raising his eyebrows as she passed. As long as he got to race, he would give it his maximum effort. He didn't seem to care all that much what emblem was on the side of the car. He proved that by coming in third on the opening drive in Australia. The 2002 season was a frustrating one, though. Kimi was often among the leaders, but never found himself in first place when the checkered flag came down. His best shot at the lead was in France, but he didn't quite make the hairpin and could only claw back up to second. It was good enough to take the number six spot in points, but not good enough to make any real waves. The 2003 season, though, was a wild ride. First, there was near constant mechanical troubles with the McLaren. There was even one event that caused him to receive a mark for speeding. During the Australian Grand Prix, a software issue preventing him from slowing down in the pit lane, resulting in him losing the lead due to penalties. He came back with a vengeance, though. In Malaysia, after only managing seventh in qualifying, he set down unreal lap times and managed to finally, finally, get that first first place win in Formula One. But it was actually in Sao Paulo, Brazil, that the Iceman showed us all what racing is about. During the race, Raikkonen and Jordan Racing's Fisichella were battling it out in the rain. With other drivers crashing around them, the two were neck and neck when the red flag came out, ending the race. At the time, Raikkonen and his McLaren was declared the winner. A week later though, officials reversed their decision and declared Giancarlo Fisichella the winner of the race. Mere mortals would be furious about having their win overturned, especially since this win would have seen Raikkonen as the world champion, ahead in points of the legendary Michael Schumacher. But Kimi Raikkonen does not race for trophies. He drives because he wants to go fast, and he was photographed with a very rare smile plastered to his face as he handed the trophy to Fisichella. In the end, second place overall is not a bad place to be, and nipping at the heels of the greatest drivers of the era proves that you are a driver worth your salt. The 2004 season started with all eyes on Raikkonen. Unfortunately, the mechanical problems that had started the year before only got way worse. The McLaren spent more time broken than in the running. Due to the unreliability of the Mercedes engine, Kimi was only able to complete two of the first seven races. Desperate for a change in direction, McLaren rolled out their new car early in time for the French Grand Prix. Shortly after at Silverstone, Raikkonen used the new car to finish second, once again breathing down the neck of the reigning King Schumacher. McLaren hadn't worked out all the problems though, and despite a first place finish in Belgium, the car still routinely let Kimi down, losing a wing in Germany, breaking down in Hungary, and having major electrical issues during Monza. Despite having a car that simply refused to work, Raikkonen still continued to be a force to be reckoned with, scoring multiple first place finishes when he could make it across the line. Needing to continuously feed his addiction to going fast, which he was getting withdrawals from while the McLaren was being worked on in the pits, Kimi teamed up with Steve Robertson to start their own racing team, appropriately called the Raikkonen Robertson, or Double R Racing to compete in Formula 3. You know, just a little side project to run between racing the world's fastest cars. Which turned out to be a good idea, because the 2005 season was a bit of a disaster for Raikkonen. Although again, it was mostly a problem with McLaren. The mechanics seemed to iron out a lot of the problems late in the year though, 
and Raikkonen performed one of the greatest feats of his racing career. Towards the end of the season, in Japan, after days of rain, Kimi started the race after a truly dismal qualifying session. Again, owing to the continued lack of reliability of the McLaren. He would start the race in 17th, meaning he'd need to overtake nearly the entire field if he was to have a chance. For once, the car worked like it should, and lap after grueling lap, Raikkonen clawed his way to the front. During the final moments of the race, he overtook Fisichella to claim the checkered flag, finally and rightfully, earning a trophy like the one he had given away years ago. Despite not winning the driver's championship, his seven podium finishes and the against all odds overtake in Suzuka earned the Iceman a new title, Formula One Racing Driver of the Year. It was clear his frustration with McLaren was growing though. Kimi was a front runner, one of the best drivers out there, but the reliability of the cars he was put in were holding him back. A man of notoriously few words, he managed to string together an entire sentence just to tell a news conference that if McLaren couldn't make the car more reliable, he'd probably stop racing for them. 2006 came, and McLaren had not made the car more reliable. Anger is not in Raikkonen's vocabulary though, he still gave it his all. But by mid-season, due to mechanical failure after mechanical failure, Kimi had no chance at a championship title. It culminated in Spain, when at the Monaco Grand Prix, the McLaren actually caught fire. The Iceman calmly climbed out of the flaming heap of carbon fiber, moved over to the wall, and without removing his suit or helmet, walked down the street to a boat, disappearing inside the cabin to presumably have a drink while watching the rest of the race on the TV. When Michael Schumacher announced his retirement, Ferrari looked to the man who had been keeping up the pressure, the Finnish driver with the cool demeanor, and asked if he'd like to ditch McLaren and race for the prancing horse. The season opened in Australia with Kimi wearing red, which he would take to the top of the podium, winning the race for Ferrari for the first time in nearly two decades. It was a taste of what was to come. Raikkonen would rack up podium finish after podium finish and set multiple fastest lap records, cinching the World Drivers' Championship title for his first and only time. The 2008 and 2009 seasons didn't treat him as well. Raikkonen set down some impressive records, tying Michael Schumacher for most fastest laps in a season at 10, but the Ferrari team was never able to climb back on top. And as the 2009 season went on, Kimi found himself in a very familiar position, sitting in a car with serious reliability issues. The aging Ferrari was struggling to keep up with the new Red Bull cars, and a multitude of crashes had left Raikkonen a bit tired. He announced that he would not be racing with Ferrari in 2010. Rumors began to circulate like wildfire. McLaren was itching to get him back, Toyota had entered the fray and needed a new driver, and Renault had actually begun telling people that Raikkonen had asked them for a spot on the team. All the rumors were false though, with Raikkonen showing rare emotion in regards to Renault's accusation, telling people that they were using his name as a marketing stunt. The truth is that Kimi Raikkonen was taking a break from Formula One altogether. He could never leave racing. After all, he had been finding the fastest line since he was three. There's no going back from that. Kimi simply chose to pursue some lower tech forms of entertainment, specifically the world of rally, where his brother had found some success, and the thrill of going around in circles with a screaming V8, NASCAR. He didn't find much success. In rally, driving the Citroen C4 as part of the junior team, he did keep up with much more experienced drivers, but the podium was always out of reach until late 2010, where he managed one win. An impressive feat for someone who was not a career rally driver, but only enough to finish 10th in points. In 2011, Raikkonen entered rally with a new team, one he created just for the occasion, but the story was much the same. Despite scoring more points, it was still only enough for 10th overall. 2011 also saw Raikkonen in the seat of a truck racing in NASCAR. After a few stints in the Toyota though, it was clear that Kimi didn't have the time to dedicate to the sport, and after a crash, he left the series. He'd leave American Ovals for another time. The hiatus from Formula One had given the public and the media a lot of time to reflect on the funniest man in Formula One. After a whirlwind of broken McLarens and Ferrari lap records, his stint in WRC gave people a chance to catch up on who he is off the track. They were mostly left in the dark though. The notoriously coy Raikkonen would often simply walk away from the press. He had better things to do, like shred mountains on a snowboard, 
or race snowmobiles, which he did with some regularity, under the pseudonym James Hunt, a nod to the 1976 infamous Party King. Partying all day and racing snowmobiles at night seemed to get old, and the call of the world's fastest sport never slowed. In 2012, Raikkonen once again found himself amid rumors, and again, he dismissed them, only to turn up in a lotus at the start of the season. For two seasons, Raikkonen raced with Lotus. 2012 was a great year, and it was enough to claim third in points. The following year in 2013, after being crowned the greatest F1 driver yet again, Raikkonen held onto enough points to come in fifth overall. 2014 was an unfortunately hard season to watch. After his return, things seemed to be looking up. Third and fifth overall is nothing to be ashamed of when it comes to Formula One, especially after losing a couple seasons worth of practice. Yet the contract with Lotus was only for two years. So for 2014, he was looking for a new seat. That's how he found himself once again wearing red underneath the prancing horse. The season started out decently enough. There was even a brilliant character-defining moment early on. New in the rules, drivers could choose their own number. While he wanted the number six, he declined it when given the opportunity, wanting instead for the number to go to Nico Rosberg, since Nico's father had sported the same number during the 80s a class act from a gentleman, and at first, it seemed like karma agreed. Kimi started off by setting the fastest lap, but was cruelly denied a podium finish. That ended up being the story of the entire season, with a dismal 12th place finish in points, his worst season yet. Raikkonen was uncharacteristically sour when talking about the Ferrari, echoing sentiments previously held for McLaren. Ferrari was experimenting with a lot of new tech, but it rarely worked and a salty Iceman let out a scathing critique of the Italian brand along the lines of, I hate it when the car doesn't drive well. Strong emotion from a normally emotionless Raikkonen. Regardless, he continued to drive for Ferrari until 2018. He never claimed another championship title though, despite some great seasons, including another third place overall finish in 2018. Kimi was plagued by mechanical issues, penalties, and new hotshots like Max Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel bringing the heat. In 2019, he left Ferrari for Alfa Romeo, but the fire seemed to be out. For three years he raced with Alfa Romeo, but due to a variety of reasons, barely managed to even finish the season. In 2021, sick with the disease that closed down the world, Kimi Raikkonen decided to once again step away from Formula One. He said goodbye to his friends in Alfa Romeo and Ferrari, and told the press that he was looking forward to retirement. Retirement and legacy. What he left behind is a legacy a true hero to the people, popular for both his skill on the track and his personality. He was never there to put on a show or to make the press love him or even respect other drivers. He was on the track to win. Despite that, the calm, collected Iceman still managed to become good friends with fellow drivers. His unapologetic demeanor became the stuff of legend, on par with the records he broke, many of which stand to this day, tied for fastest laps in a season, twice, the last driver to win for Ferrari, most second and third place finishes of any driver, most race starts for a driver, and the only driver to win with a V10, V8, and turbo hybrid 5.6. Joining an exclusive club of Finnish racing drivers who stood atop the racing world, setting the bar for those who came after. He's a man of few words, who was determined to show the world that fast is a way of life. That it's not about the fame, the public, or being liked. It's about pushing a car to the limit, walking the razor's edge between control and a fiery demise, all while keeping your cool. History will remember him for maintaining that chill, both on and off the track. And despite only one first place championship title, it's undeniable that Raikkonen is one of Formula One's greatest drivers, 